Welcome to BUS 1520 Managerial Accounting. In today's video, we're going to be talking about support department allocation, and that's the first part of chapter 19. So as we look at the chapter objectives, today we're going to be talking about chapter learning objectives one, two, and three. The other video that is already available covers the remaining learning objectives for this chapter. Before we get started, I wanted to point out that earlier editions of this book had a third approach to allocating support department costs, and that would be the reciprocal services method. That method is actually preferred because it recognizes that support departments use other support departments. All support departments might use all other support departments. And so it actually gives you maybe a better sense of your true costs of production and how those are allocated um, to the production departments from the support departments. The reason it was removed from the 16th edition of the book is simply because it, it gets a little bit complicated. It's a series, a system of equations and you have to substitute one into the other. You can't use it if there's more than two support departments, at least not in the, in the way that, that we can do at this level of math. And so they removed it from the textbook, not because it's not a good approach, but because it became more of a math question than an actual accounting question. I only mention it not because you're responsible for knowing anything about it, but because it is out there. It is a preferred approach and it, and it intuitively makes more sense to say that support departments also use other support departments and and so it, as I said becomes a, a more of a realistic um, allocation of those costs. So as I said today we're going to be looking at the first three learning objectives you can see on the screen right now and so we need to understand what a support department is. So they provide a service that helps to make the product, but they aren't actually involved in the production process. So you might hear them called service departments and they might include things like maintenance and human resources and um, other, other departments like that. So all of those direct costs are accumulated in the cost center and then we need to allocate them from the support departments onto the product because they are related to the production of the product. And so in order to really understand the true cost of producing the product, we need to make sure that those support department costs are included there as well. And I apologize, I just hit the wrong button. So let me go back up to the top here. And so, we have discussed in earlier chapters, starting in chapter 16, the allocation of overhead. So as we talk about here, the allocation of overhead that we first introduced in chapter 16 was the single plant-wide rate or what I refer to as the traditional approach. We could use multiple production department rates to see the difference in costs that that creates. And we could also use activity-based costing, which is um, which is what the focus of our last chapter, chapter 18. So regardless of which approach we choose to use, the idea is that we are allocating all of the costs that belong to the product remember product versus period cost that was covered in chapter 15. So what matters in the long run is that all of the costs associated with making the product end up as part of the cost of the product. It's inventoryable costs. They end up on the balance sheet and in inventory until the product is sold, at which time they become part of cost of goods sold on an income statement. So as we talk about these different ways of approaching the allocation of costs, you just have to keep in mind that the end result is the same. That is, all of the costs end up being part of the cost of the product. As you can see in this visual, it's just a matter of which route you take to get there. But in the end, all the costs end up being part of the cost of the product. But if you're making multiple products, 
It might be that costs shift from one product to another. And as I've indicated in the past, that, that's really important that we have an accurate sense of what our costs are so that we know that we're um, charging the right amount for our product, for example. So the single plant-wide rate is, of course, going to be the easiest because it's, it is the, you know, we have just one rate and every product gets allocated in the same way based on the same cost driver. And our first exercise is going to be the single plant-wide rate. Now, I need to just emphasize as we talk about all of these different approaches, we start with the easiest, the single plant-wide rate. We then go to multiple production departments and then we go to activity-based costing. As we go through each one of those, it becomes a little bit more complicated or complex to do the calculations. So my, my caveat, my warning to you is you would want to use the simplest possible approach that still gives us meaningful, appropriate, correct cost information about the products that we are producing. So we don't want to overly complicate things, but we want to use um, the best approach to understand what our true costs are. So let's go to our exercises now. And we'll be starting with exercise one, of course, for chapter 19, um, which is using the direct method for allocating support department costs. So exercise one says support department cost allocation using the direct method. So again, what we're doing here is taking this, the cost of those support departments and allocating them out to the production departments. Certainly if we have only one support department, um, there would be no way of using um, what we're going to look at in the next exercise, which is the multiple department approach. And so for this, um, for this exercise, though we have just one support department, we're told that the support department costs total $157,000. The first step would be to decide, well, what are we going to use to allocate these costs? So for example, if this was a maintenance department, we might allocate it based on square footage, assuming that, that um, you know, departments that take up more room are going to require more maintenance. Maybe we would allocate it based on, I don't know, the, the dollar amount of the total assets in each department. Because if you have higher dollar value of assets, it takes more maintenance. Uh, maybe if the, support department was human resources, we would allocate it based on the number of employees per department. This exercise is intentionally vague. It doesn't tell us what the cost driver is. It just tells us that these are the numbers related to that cost driver. Again, based on what I just said, these numbers could be in square footage. It could be a number of employees. It could be you know, whatever they think is an appropriate tool to divide up these $157,000 in total cost. And so in order to do um, use the direct method, we have to know first the, the total units of the cost driver. And again, we don't know in this exercise what that cost driver is, but we do know the units that are relevant and so I'm just adding up the 1500 in production department one plus the 200 and 300 for the next two departments. That's a total of 2000 units of whatever that cost driver is. And so for support department one with total costs of $157,000, we're gonna spread those over 2000 units of, of whatever that cost driver is. Maybe it's employees, square footage, whatever. So $157,000 divided by 2,000 units would be a cost of $78.50 per unit. And now it's just a matter of assigning the cost based on the units that are provided here. So for example, for production department one, 1,500 units times 78.50 per unit 
is $117,750. So of support department one, because production department one is three quarters of the total square footage, employees, whatever the cost driver is, it gets three quarters, most of the cost. Go ahead and do production department two. We have 200 units of whatever that is at $78.50 per unit. That's a total of $15,700 that would be allocated out of the support department into production department two. And finally, for the production department three, oops, 23,550. You wanna check yourself. You can add those three numbers together and make sure that we have fully allocated the $157,000 that makes up that um, support department's costs. And it, we did, so it should match exactly. It should be that we have completely allocated support department one to the three production departments. Now, what we're going to see in the next exercise, um, actually, let me just make one more observation before we go on. So in this, it implies that there is more than one support department because um, it says support department one. I assume that they put the one there because there's a two and maybe a three and a four and so on. If this is the single plant-wide um, method, we would have to use the same approach for um, every other support department. So we wouldn't have a separate cost driver if this was the single plant-wide approach. If it was the multiple um, departments, multiple um, departments, we could have separate cost drivers for each department. And then, of course, if we use activity-based costing, that would be spreading the costs, not just from a support department, but based on the actual um, service that they are providing, which could come from multiple departments. So let me clear my drawings there, and we'll move on to our next exercise. And so this exercise, gives us something that maybe is a bit more realistic. We have two support departments and we're allocating each of those to the two production departments. Now, if you're doing the direct approach, each, as we saw in the last exercise, each support department is allocated only to the production departments. So it makes it easier. If we had had a second production department, we um, could have, allocated that without knowing what happened with the first support department. So in other words, in our first exercise, even though we had only one support department, we didn't need to know anything about those other support departments that I suggested probably exist. Otherwise, why would they number this one number one? But we don't have to take that into account. Each support department is allocated straight to the production departments there's no support department cost allocated to any other support departments. In the sequential method, we recognize, as I said at the very beginning of this video, you know, support departments also provide support to other support departments. For example, the human resource department also provides service to the maintenance department. The maintenance or the custodial staff maybe provides cleaning in the human resource department. And so we realize that there's a reciprocity there, that they are su providing support to each other as well as to the production departments. But when we use the direct method, we ignore that. We only allocate directly to the production departments. In the sequential method, we will allocate support departments to other support departments, but not all of the other support departments. We have to decide an order in which we are going to allocate those. Now for our purposes for class, the exercises or problems will need to tell you how to allocate it, in which order to allocate it. We can't make that decision. So it tells us right here, um, assume that support department one is allocated first 
and then we allocate to support department two. Excuse me, then we allocate, not two, then we allocate support department two. So support department one provides service to support department two, as well as the two production departments. It is likely that support department two also provides service or support to support department one. But in the sequential method, also known as the step-down method, in the sequential method, we don't allocate once we allocate support department one, we don't allocate anything else to it. That department's already been cleared out or zeroed out. And so it makes it a little bit more realistic than the direct method because we do recognize that support departments use each other, but it's not as reliable or accurate as the reciprocal services method I mentioned at the beginning of this video because as I said, in this example, we're not going to be allocating support department two to support department one. Probably uses its services, but because we do allocation from support department one first, that's all we do. And so this exercise asks us just to do the first step, which is allocating department one to support department two. I'm going to take this a little bit further so you can see what happens next. So let's see what we're told here. Black Diamond Devices produces replacement components for smartphones. Costs from support department one are allocated based on the, based on the number of employees. That is their cost driver. So maybe that's human resources. And so when we go to allocate support department one, we're going to be looking at the number of employees in all of the other departments. And so I have that highlighted for you right now, not counting the employees in support department one, how many total employees are there? 10 plus 15 plus 25, there are 50 total employees not counting those in support department one. I'm just going to make a note of that over here. 50 total equals 50. Okay. And so when we go to allocate support department one, we're going to be allocating the total cost of the department, which is right here, $35,000. And we are going to be allocating that to support department two, production department one and then production department two. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'll put the first calculation on the screen just so you can see how I'm doing it. So we know that there are 50 total employees. 10 of those 50, 20%, 0.2 of the employees are in support department two. So support department two is going to receive 10, 50th, 20% of the $35,000. So go ahead and do that calculation. And so it gets 20% or $7,000 of the cost of support department one. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, production department one has 15 of the 50 employees or 30%. And so they're going to get 30% of that cost or 10,500. And finally, production department two has 25 of the 50, 50% 50 or half. And so they're going to receive half of the total cost. Just like in the last exercise, if you add those up, you should see that all $35,000 of support department one have been allocated to the other departments. So the cost that's still in that cost account for support department one is now zero. We fully allocated it out. But now let's look at support department two. Support department two has a direct cost of $15,500. But we also just allocated 7,000 to that account. Okay, 7,000 to that account from support department one, right? 
And so the total cost that's in, I'm just gonna sneak it right in here. Actually, I can put it right down here. The total cost that's now in support department two, adding those two together is $22,500. So that's how much is in support department two right now. Hopefully you can see that it's the direct cost of 15,500 plus the allocated 7,000. So now we're going to allocate that combined cost to the remaining departments, which are production department one and two. We are told that costs from support department two are allocated based on asset value. And so as I suggested, maybe this is a, um, a maintenance department. And so production departments that have more assets require more maintenance or more expensive maintenance. That seems to make sense to me. So I'm going to add together the asset value of those two departments because those are the only two departments that we're going to be allocating. Remember, um, support department two probably also provides support to support department one, but we're done with support department one. That's what makes this different than reciprocal services, where support department two would also be allocated to one as well as the two production departments. So let's add those two asset values together, see what we're dealing with. And that gives us a total of, I'm just gonna put my note over here to remind me. Equal, whoops, wrong line, sorry. That up here. So the total for those two departments asset value, $11,430. And so, we can go ahead and allocate now. And again, I'll put my, my calculation on the screen just so that you can see what I'm doing here. So we're going to allocate to production department one first. Their assets total $6,230. That's out of the 11,430 total. And then we're going to multiply that by the current cost in support department two. Remember, not just the direct cost, but all the cost that's in there right now, 22,500. And so, I'm just doing my math here. You can disregard the phone ringing in the background. So 6230 divided by 11,430 times 22,500. Now, if you're doing that math along with me, you'll notice that the numbers aren't very pretty. Um, they, you know, they aren't nice round numbers like we usually have. And why do you suppose that is? Well, because the exercise didn't expect us to go this far. Remember, I'm doing something extra here so that you can see what the next steps are. And then we can take, so I just rounded it off to the closest dollar and that's fine. Then for production department two, their total asset value is 5,200 and divide that by the total. And we then multiply by 22,500 and the amount that needs to be allocated to production department two, again, rounding off to the closest dollar, 10,300 sorry, 10,236. So now we've fully allocated both of the support departments and all of the costs that's left is in the two production departments. And so at this point, can add those together. And for Production department one, I got 22,764. And for production department two, And I'm not going to check it right now, but if you wanted to check to make sure, did I do this right? The way you would do that is by adding together the two amounts that are currently in the production departments and make sure that that includes the total of all um, 
all four of, well, I guess we don't have to do it that way. Um, we would have to add together, erase those two, just the two support department amounts and make sure that those two combined have now been added to the production departments. The step that I did not show here was like I showed here for support department two, to get the total cost of production department one, we would need to include not only these allocated costs that are down here, but also the direct cost we have here. So production department one, 99,000 direct costs plus 22,764 in allocated costs from the two support departments gives us a total of $121,764 for production department one. That's the cost to run production department one. Let me go ahead and put our green check marks in there. Again, we've done a lot of um, additional stuff here that was not required in the exercise, but I really did need you to see what comes next. It's not just allocating one department, but then that department kind of drops out of the equation and then we allocate the, the remaining support department. So you could use this approach for a company that has, I don't know, 17 support departments. It would be quite complicated, lots of steps involved, but we would take that first support department and allocate it to the other 16 support departments plus all the production departments. Then we're down to 16, we allocate you know, the next one and we're down to 15. So it takes 17 iterative steps to allocate all of that. So that, that would be pretty complicated. But again, necessary if we're using the sequential or step-down approach as we used here. Okay, so when we, as we move on, um, we're back to in exercise three, practicing with the direct method again. And as we saw for the, um, as I said, in exercise one, when you use the direct method, what you do for one support department is totally independent and unrelated to what you do for the other support departments. And in this exercise, it's actually going to have us walk through all of the steps, which we did not need to do in exercise one. In exercise one, we had just one support department and we allocated those costs to the production departments. In this exercise, we have a slightly more realistic than their two support departments, maintenance and janitorial, and two production departments, which are cutting and pruning. Christmas Timber Inc. produces Christmas trees. The trees are produced through a cutting and pruning process. Machine maintenance and janitorial labors are performed throughout the production process by non-production employees. Maintenance and janitorial costs are allocated based on machine hours used and the number of trees in each department, respectively. So that just told us what our cost drivers are. For the maintenance department, we're going to use machine hours. And for the janitorial, we're going to use number of trees. Company estimates the cutting and pruning areas typically have about 60, 20 and 60 trees respectively in them at one time. The company also estimates that the cutting process requires about nine times as many machine hours as the pruning process. We're given the total cost for each department and we are then asked to use the direct method. So what does that mean? Yeah, the maintenance department is probably maybe providing some maintenance to the janitorial department, but we're not going to recognize that. We're not allocating support departments to other support departments. Yes, the janitorial department probably cleans the maintenance department, but we're not going to recognize that. The two support departments are going to be allocated independently, separately, only to the production departments. So we're going to have to do this in a couple different steps because you'll notice what this asks for is the department production department total costs. So that's going to include three different pieces and I'm going to make a line for each of those. So the first thing I'm going to include is the direct costs. And we know those direct costs already. Let me just get over there. So the direct costs of the cutting department are $54,500. And the direct cost for the pruning department is given as 11,000. So that's pretty simple. Then we're going to have allocated costs from the maintenance, whoops, maintenance 
<laughs> department and the janitorial department. And I'm actually going to skip a line there to, to give myself a little bit more, whoops, maybe not like that. Give myself a little bit more room. Okay, so what do we know? The maintenance department is going to allocate based on machine hours. And what do we know about machine hours? It tells us right here that cutting requires about nine times as many machine hours as the pruning process. So if the cutting process takes nine hours, the pruning process takes one hour. We can do this like a ratio, nine to one. That's a total of 10 hours. For every 10 hours, the cutting process is taking nine of those. And so I get my annotate back up here. So we're going to allocate maintenance based on machine hours. And just like we did in exercise number one, then we're going to take the total hours, whoops, 10, and find a cost per hour. So $780 per hour or per unit of time. And of that unit of time, so it's not completely hours, um, it's units, units of hours. Again, we're using a ratio of nine to one, a total of 10. So the maintenance department is allocated based on that. And the um, cutting process, as I have highlighted, still the cutting process takes nine times as much. So it's going to get nine tenths of the cost. Nine tenths of 7,800, you can do it that way, or you could do nine times 780. Can you get the same answer either way, which is 7,020. And then for the janitorial, or excuse me, for the pruning department, they have one unit of the time one tenth or $780 of the maintenance department's cost. We're then going to allocate the janitorial department. And it tells us that janitorial is going to be allocated based on number of trees. And there are, we're just going to use these numbers, 20 and 60 trees respectively for cutting and pruning. So for a total of 80 trees, For a total of 80 trees, that gives us a cost for the janitorial department of about $62, whoops, $62.50 per tree. Okay, and so if the janitorial, excuse me, if the cutting department has 20 trees, at $62.50 each for the janitorial cost. That's a total of $1,250. And the pruning department has 60 trees at a total of $62.50 per tree or $3,750 there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we now have the direct costs for each department production department plus the allocated cost from each of the two support departments. And so to find the final answer for this exercise, we just need to add together the direct and the allocated costs. And that if I did my math correctly, 62,770 for cutting. And 15,530 for pruning. So this takes what we learned in exercise one and just um, takes it one step further. So we had to allocate both support departments directly to each of the production departments. Again, no support department allocations to any other support departments and no dependents. Um, we could have allocated just the pruning department or just the cutting department without knowing what happened with the other 
with the other allocation. And that's why in exercise one, we are able to do just one support department. And our final exercise for today is using the sequential method. I'm gonna collapse that so we can see the whole exercise here. And just like in the previous exercise, we're now going to do every step. And so I'm going to um, set up those same rows again. Let me read what the exercise says first. Marte Creations produces winter scarves. The scarves are produced in the cutting and sewing department. So those are the production departments. The maintenance and security departments support these production departments and allocate costs based on machine hours and square feet, respectively. Information about each department is provided in the following table. We're asked to use the sequential method and allocate the support department with the highest cost first and allocate all support department costs to the production departments, then compute the total cost of each production department. Okay, so we have two Support departments, maintenance and security. We're asked to allocate the one with the highest total cost first. That would be the security department. So let me get my annotate tool back here. So we're going to, I'm, I'm just gonna make a note here of our direct costs first. That will make it easier for us when we get to the end of the problem. So the direct cost for the cutting department, 21,200. For the sewing department, 24,900. We're then going to allocate the security department. And then we will allocate the maintenance department. Again, we're allocating security first because the exercise told us to allocate um, the, the department with the highest total cost first. So since, the, since we're using the sequential method and we're allocating the security department first, we're going to allocate security to maintenance and to cutting and sewing. The sequential method allows us to recognize that support departments provide service, provide support to other support departments as well. And so when we allocate security, we're going to allocate it not just to the two production departments, but also the other support department. So let's see, maintenance is going to allocate based on machine hours. It tells us here in the second sentence, third sentence, the maintenance and security departments support these production departments and allocate costs based on machine hours and square feet respectively. So that means machine hours is for maintenance. It's going to Put a note here to remind us machine hours is maintenance and and whoops <laughs> and security is square footage. So when we allocate the security department, we are going to be allocating to um, based on square footage. So we're allocating the security department to the maintenance department and the cutting and sewing departments. So we're ignoring the square footage for the security department. Yes, the security department probably also provides security to itself, but we can't allocate to, to ourselves. Um, again, in the reciprocal services, it does allow us to allocate support departments to all other support departments, but we don't include you know, and, and allocation to itself, even, even in that method. So let's add those three that I just boxed in red, those three square footages, and we get a total of 6,000 square feet. So if there's a total of 6,000 square feet, and the total cost of the security department is 4,500, whoops, so $4,500 divided by 6,000 square feet is? $0.75 cents per, whoops, missed my dollar sign there, $0.75 cents per square foot. Here we go. 
So the security department costs are going to be allocated based on square footage and we're allocating 75 cents per square foot. So again, I'll show you the first calculation here. If we're allocating 75 cents per square foot to the maintenance department that has 600 square feet, the total cost would be $450 allocated to the maintenance department. How about the cutting department? Well, at 75 cents each and 2,400 2, square feet, that would be a total of $1,800 allocated to the cutting department. And go ahead and do the sewing department at 3,000 square feet, 75 cents. That would be 2,500, oops, sorry, $2,250. And we'd want to um, add those together, make sure that it does total the $4,500 that I have highlighted up there as the cost of the security department. And it does. So we have now fully allocated the security department. Now, what are our costs in the maintenance department? Well, we have 200, $2,200 in direct cost for the maintenance department, but we just added $450 in allocated costs from the security department. So the total there is now $2,650. So when we allocate out the uh, maintenance department next, we have not just $2,200 in there now, but $2,650 that has to be allocated. And we're going to allocate that based on, as you can see with the red line up here at the top of the screen, the maintenance department is going to be allocated based on machine hours. Now we are only allocating to the remaining two departments. And so that is these machine hours in the cutting and sewing department. 3,600 plus 5,400 is a total of 9,000 hours. And remember the total cost in there right now is $2,650. That's for 9,000 machine hours. And for some reason that doesn't give me a, a nice round number, 2,650, hmm. very interesting. So I got 29.4 cents. Doesn't tell us anything about rounding. So I'm just gonna try to use that. Okay, 29.444. Very strange that it wouldn't come out with a nice round number here, but that's what they gave us. So, 2650 divided by 9,000 machine hours and 3,600 of those machine hours are for the cutting department. So multiply that by 3,600 machine hours for the cutting department. And what do we get now? As long as we use the, the um, repeating decimal there, we do get a nice round result anyway of $1,060 and for the 5,400 machine hours for the sewing department. One way of doing that would be just to figure out how much we have left to allocate, right? So just take the total and subtract this. Or if you still have that 0 0.29444 repeating in your calculator, um, you get 1590. So unfortunately, that repeating decimal made that calculation a bit more complicated. But we're ready to finish up this final exercise for today. We're just going to add the direct costs for the 
each production department plus the allocations from the two support departments. I got 2460 for the cutting department. and 28740 for the sewing department. And as I explained in the previous exercise, if you did want to check yourself, you can do that by simply adding those two fully allocated costs and add, I can add these four numbers and make sure that they equal the total of these two numbers. And that will tell us, show us that we have fully allocated and not allocated too much from the maintenance and security departments. So all of that cost is now captured just in the two production departments. So to summarize, as we finish up here, um, we know that there are multiple ways of allocating the overhead or support department costs. We've looked at direct and sequential methods. We know that we could have just a single plant-wide rate that we used for all the production departments. So we could use allocate everything based on machine hours, or we could have allocated everything based on square footage. In this case, we're using the multiple department approach that we are allocating the two different departments using different criteria, machine hours, square footage. Um, Activity-based costing is just one more layer on top of that, where rather than allocating the cost of a department, we would allocate the cost of an activity. And so that usually those activities, there would usually typically be more activities than there are departments. And so that makes it a little bit more complicated, but the advantage of activity-based costing is it does give us a better sense of our true cost of producing the product. And one final time, we would wanna use the, the easiest approach that still gives us a good sense of what our costs are. And so that finishes up this first part of the chapter. And the next part of the chapter is allocating the joint costs of production. And that is already covered in the, or that, excuse me, that is covered in the other, the second video for this chapter. Thank you for sharing.